Welcome, this video is gonna focus on the drawing tools available in AutoCAD LT. Now, I'm not gonna look at all the drawing tools, but the ones to, you're gonna be using probably most of the time you become a bit more familiar with, and then you can explore the others. Now, this document can be available in the video description. So the template is provided, and when opening it, you'll notice you won't be able to alter the text as they are on a separate layer. Now we'll look at layers in a separate video, but you're gonna be drawing essentially on the drawing layer. To begin, I, the document should be set up with the grids turned on, so we can turn them on and off. I suggest turning on the snap to drawing grid on, along with the polar tracking. Now notice polar tracking, you can turn on and off with F10, and the snap, um, as F9. We're gonna zoom in on the line tool to begin with, and we'll be comparing the line against the polyline shortly. Now with the previous video, it suggests always starting at the origin. So remember, this is this point here. This is zero, zero in space. And so if we're determining the uh, length, which is the Y plane against the uh, X, which is determining the length. So to begin, we can go up to the top and select line, or we can type in the command bar line. So I'm just gonna slide, type line in this case, and then press enter. And so now we've got our line function. And notice at the cursor, also along at the command bar, it's asking us to specify the first point. So we always wanna start at zero, zero. So zero, and then you can press tab or comma, and then zero. So AutoCAD now knows that we wanna start at that origin. It's now asking us to determine the next point or the length that we want it to be. So I might round it off to 100. In architecture and engineering, we want it to be rounding it off to the nearest millimeter. So try not to have these um, you know, 0 0.08 in length. Nothing's gonna be that uh, precise, so the tolerance really needs to come into play. So specifying 100, now the next point, if I press um, tab or enter, I should then be looking at the angle. So the angle, and let's work out if our polar tracking's taking effect. So it should be at zero, it is having an effect. So that dotted green line that extends all the way beyond, that is the polar tracking that's turned on. So now it should also appear at 45, uh, whoops. There it is, sorry, 45, around to 90, around to 135, and so on and so forth, 180. So let's make this line, you can be putting it in manually. So let's say 50 degrees. And there we've done our first line. We can continue to put in by selecting on the drawing board, which I will be doing, or typing it in manually. Best to go through and type it manually, but to speed the video up, I'm just gonna make a little mountain range um, just by selecting it on the drawing board. And there we go. So that's the line tool. Now let's compare it to the polyline tool. Polyline, you can be typing in P line or going up to the area here where it says there, polyline. The great thing with AutoCAD, like Fusion 360, it gives a really good description and a nice clear visual of what the tool does and how to go through and use it. So polyline, we can be selecting, same thing, I'll do it a bit more freehand, and I'll create a similar shape so then we can compare them. And let's go down to there. Now if I look at line and I select it, they are individual lines. So in selection of AutoCAD, you don't need to be holding shift to select multiple. You can just continue to select and then to deselect, I'm just gonna press escape. But if I select this object or this line here and this line here, notice that it's not selecting any others. So these are unlinked. They're not connected at all. Whereas if I select any on polyline, it selects all of them. So that's how they differ. You're gonna be using polylines probably a lot more than lines because often we wanna have uh, these joining. So when we're making changes, it takes effect over, say it's a thickness of a wall, it'll have that effect over the whole thing. 
Now, if we ever need to go through and edit these, we can go under modify and then look at edit polyline. And so what we might be wanting to do, and notice that it's prompting us with what we want to do. Do we want to join it or close it, so on and so forth. And in this case, maybe we want to make this a shape so it has an additional line underneath and closing off there. So I'll say close. And there we go. Now we've got a shape rather than a path. Moving on to rectangle. Pretty straightforward is going through and selecting rectangle up here. This is going to be great for identifying internal rooms. And so you're specifying the first point and then the second point. Now we do want to round it off. So 400 works really well by tab, let's say 200. And there we have it. The other thing we probably want to look at is selection. So when we're selecting something, we can be, um, if we click and drag to the left, it's going to select everything that it touches. So if we go to, uh, to there, it's going to select all of those areas. If you need it to be a bit more precise, um, we want to be selecting and then dragging right. And notice it'll be blue rather than green. So we might go right there. And so how they differ is the blue, if it falls completely within the selection, it will go through and highlight it. Um, whereas green, it needs to select everything it touches. So blue tends to be, it's selecting more detail. So it's going to be more of an isolated selection rather than whatever it touches, it will go through and be selecting. Moving down to circles and arcs. This can be completed by selecting circle and notice there's a number of them there. Center radius, center diameter, probably the ones you're going to be using uh, most commonly. So selecting the center point and then projecting out to determine the diameter. So let's say 250, whoops. Then compare that to arc. There's a lot more different um, ones that are available. So start, center, end, uh, start, sorry, center, start, angle, so on and so forth. One I like to go through and use is start, end, and direction, especially when beginning. So this might be more familiar if you've used um, Adobe uh, Illustrator with the pen tool. So we're selecting our starting point, we're selecting our end point, and then we're pulling the curvature of that arc. So how intense it is, is how far we pull it away. Moving down, we've got the double line and offset. Now notice that the offset function is provided in the modify tab, not the drawing tab, but they work. You're gonna, in terms of, I wanted to compare them beside one another because they have a sort of a similar sort of function. So a double line, we type in D line as a shortcut. It used to be called multi line or M line. And then I'm going to press enter. Now, notice on the command line down the bottom, we've got breaks, caps, drag lines, snap, width. Caps is referring to if we want to have ends upon it. So what I might type in is C. And in one, one of them, I might say at the end point. Yeah, I'm happy with end point. And then we'll discuss the difference between all of them. The drag line is the additional line that it's going to be duplicating or dragging out. So drag line, you can say left, center, or right. So in this case, we might make it the right hand one. Then we might discuss the or determine the width of this line. So width, let's make it uh, 30. So now when I draw a line, and I'll try and draw it like the mountain before, next point, next point, next point. And now we did say that the caps should be at the end point. So if I go enter, notice that it applies a cap. So a cap can be at both ends. It can be at the end point, which we specified in this one, at the starting point, 
or with none, so it would be open. So a double line is I'm producing one line or determining one line, and then essentially AutoCAD is producing a duplicate or an offset upon that um, as the, the separate line. And that's determined by that drag line. Is it on the center? Is it on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side? So that's sort of the area there. Now offset is similar in terms of, I'll produce a similar shape. Now the one thing it won't do is produce those end caps. But you might find it's quicker to use and easier to learn when you're modeling. So I've just drawn a line and now under offset here, so modify offset, I can be selecting the object. Uh, why didn't that work? Select that and then offset. Then that's right. So sorry, specify offset distance or through, and so maybe we, we want to make it the same, 30 mil we want to be the distance. And now notice we can put it on the inner side or the outer side of that. So I find offset, you're gonna be drawing, say, if we go back to our start and where I used it here. The internal and external walls, I've gone through and used it. So I've drawn a line using the polyline and then I've used offset to determine the thickness of these walls. I just find it a lot quicker and probably easier to manage than using double line. Thanks for watching. Obviously there's more tools in the drawing area, which we'll look at some later, especially the hatch tool when drawing the house. But as an introduction, I think these are the ones that need to be covered.